Hello, it is Tuesday, June 6th, 2023. I'm Chris Remond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle today, which means a relatively approachable puzzle with a theme, but also apparently an extraordinary quality. I, I don't know what this means, obviously. How could I just yet? But um, but there is a note that was added to today's uh, crossword page. Today's puzzle has an extraordinary quality. Can you discover what it is? I don't know. I hope I can discover what it is. Um, so let's try and discover um, what it is. In any case, this extraordinary edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Kathleen Quinn, Quotidiophile, Overfull Hitbox, and, as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shoalmaster, and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Soul Patreon campaign, for their generous support there, sustaining this series and helping keep this channel going. For that, I'm very appreciative. And uh, I appreciate, of course, as well, the contributions of everybody who's a patron of the Daily Soul Patreon campaign. Thank you if you are one. If you'd like to consider becoming one of those people, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve. Of course, there you can find all the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, uh, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And as a benefactor, you also get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. So thank you to all of the patrons. Thank you, of course, to everybody who has subscribed to the YouTube channel. I appreciate that as well. And don't forget, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, a nice friendly chat community, in the link in the description field underneath the video as well. So let's get on to this um, this extraordinary, apparently, debut crossword by Daniel Jarrett, his first puzzle for the New York Times, which was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. And I did make myself a clean version of this page so that we can fit the whole thing on the screen. So let's start solving. All right, fist bump. That is a dap. It's become incredible. I mean, it's unbelievable how quickly that has become a sort of default thing um, aided by the, the pandemic, I suppose. Bilingual explorer of TV, or Dora the Explorer, and eons, ages, a long time. Uh, oh, <laughs> pret well, pret manger ready to eat in France. That's also the name of a um, kind of a fast service kind of uh, coffee and bakery chain. They have sandwiches and things like that, and they're absolutely everywhere uh, here in the UK. And um, it's funny that it's not being used as the brand name here. Um, but yeah, ready to eat. There you go. All right, fairy tale batty is an ogre. What a bassoon has that a bass doesn't is a, a reed. Um, so a bassoon, a wind instrument, um, that, is a, that is an instrument that has a, uh, a bassoon is an example of an instrument with a reed and a bass um, string instrument does not have such a thing. Sparkling Italian wine is asti. <laughs> My classic misremembered word, but it's it was in the puzzle just within the last couple days, yesterday or the day before. So I do remember in this case, it was Asti. Holder of over 1,000 patents. Oh, it must be Thomas Edison. And to fly like an eagle is to soar. South American animal with a distinctive snout. A tapir, maybe? And British bye-byes are tatas. Lawyer Clooney, a mall Clooney. Um human rights lawyer, I think, and, and married to George Clooney. Um, bittersweet Italian liqueur is an Amaro. Bitter liqueur. And uh, Tic Tacs are mints, tiny little mints. Rules are rules, you might, you might declare. And a mailroom job could be someone who sorts the mails, a sorter. An orthodontic device for separating teeth, that must be a spacer, that would make sense. Space out teeth correctly. Places to be pampered are spas. This looks like a beer. Pale lager informally is a pills. Yes, a pill, pills, pilsner. Okay, does some detective work. Um, solves or snoops maybe? Snoop around? Abbreviation above zero on some phones. Operator, yes, there we go. Okay, much less relevant these days, but... Um, but sometimes still labeled. Does some detective work? Uh, oh, right, yes, I just looked at that, snoops, okay. Um, funky bass technique, you could you could do slap bass on your readless instrument, in this case a bass guitar rather than a sort of double bass in an orchestra. 
Can you do slap bass on a top of bass? I wouldn't think so. I think that relies on there being a, a pickup, an electric pickup. Um, at least in a performance setting. You could probably do it yourself at home. Uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry. Lauren Michaels of SNL, the longtime producer of Saturday Night Live, and Exploding Star, uh, Exploding Star in Nova. There we go. Uh, New York City's Lex or Fifth. Those are avenues. So Lexington Avenue or Fifth Avenue. And oh, oh, Ren Ishii, Lucy Liu's character in Kill Bill. I sort of remember that name from when I saw that film. I don't know if I've seen it since it was in theaters, but but I still somehow remember that. Two thumbs down, and I hated it. Uh, oh, oh, those are pans. I see. Those these are examples of pans. We have two uh, re negative reviews, basically pans. Okay, British World War II weapon, a Sten, I think. It's a gun that was used by British troops in World War II. I think that's right. I could be wrong. Let's check the crosses. Theme park shuttles are trams, I suspect. And treadmill treadmill setting is um, is it a sort of speed like a run or a trot, a jog or a walk or something? Oh, maybe it's just speed. <laughs> okay, I don't know why that didn't come to mind a little sooner. And somewhat could be a tad, just a bit. Indy five hundred vehicle, a race car, I suppose. Also a um, a palindrome. Leaves in editorially. Uh, stets is when you leave something in. Oh, that's a palindrome as well. That's funny that they're crossing each other. Um, nice little detail from Daniel Jarrett. Maybe that's part of the theme. I haven't actually noticed anything thematic yet. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, bright is starry or... Um, bright. Sm oh, could be bright as an intelligent, smart. It's probably that. What AI is trained on? It's trained on data. And as we all have been hearing a lot about recently, abysses could be deeps, maybe? the In the deeps, in, maybe deep in the ocean, in the abyss? I'm not sure. Let's check some of these crosses. Drink like a cat. Oh, could be lap up. And parking places are so Spots, maybe? Or I would make this one difficult, wouldn't it? Uh, trippy, oh, no, that must be right. Tricky, dr trippy drug LSD. Um, parking places are spots. And a great primate is an ape. Great ape. Some convention goers are um, delegates, maybe, to a political convention, perhaps. You could send delegates. So Dell's DC Insider, oh, they might be a delegate to a convention. DC Insider is Paul, a politician. And woodworking fasteners are tea nuts, maybe? Um, yeah, I think that that's right. You, do, um, you, know, you tighten them. Uh, NBA team whose fans include the Brooklyn Brigade. I mean, I'm not familiar with the fan nickname Brooklyn Brigade, but it looks like the Nets to me, and I do remember that team existing. So let's see. Step to it, you could say, to encourage someone to move more quickly. And actress Longoria, Eva Longoria. Oh, it's funny, this one. This extends the palindromic nature of race car in the sense that it's flanked by these. Is that going to be true with Stets as well? Is this going to be Lama, the priest? Yes, leader in Tibetan Buddhism, Lama. Um... The 2L Lama, that's a beast. The 1L Lama, he's a priest. Uh, there's some Ogden Nash for you. <laughs> uh, so there we go. All right, so we have this sort of cross of... No. We have more than a cross. Oh, no. Oh, I see what's extraordinary about this. Oh, my goodness. It's not just a cross. It's not just that we have a cross of palindromes running through the grid. I think the entire grid is palindromic because smart and trams, these T's are, are symmetrically disposed. Speed and deeps, T nuts and stunt. Shameless publicity move is a stunt. Oh my, this whole thing is going to work this way. This will be slip, place for a yacht, 
This will be it's a lead into gift or miracle. It's a gift. It's a miracle. Oh my goodness. Um, this will be spoons. No, this will be. Sp yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Spoons. I thought I read that wrong. No, no, it won't. This will be enroll. And what is the clue? Sorry. <laughs> uh, register to Brits. Yes. Enroll. And the two Brits means um, there's one L in the British spelling of this word, as opposed to the North American spelling with, or maybe the U S spelling can Canada sometimes, I don't know Canadian spelling very well. Canadian spelling sometimes follows U S convention and sometimes follows British convention. So actually I'm not sure in this case, but anyway, the U S spelling would have, would have um, two L's. So this will be the spoons. Yes. Egg race utensils are spoons. This next one will be Rouse R A R R A O S. Ah, Rayo's tomato sauce brand named for a famous restaurant in East Harlem. Yes, there is an Italian restaurant in East Harlem called Rayo's. Well, I've never seen that in the New York Times Crossroad before. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a family restaurant, and they um, I don't know when. At a certain point, they started um, bottling their sauces and selling selling other things. But yeah, Rayo's. So there we go. Uh, let's see. This will be saps. Well, yeah, I could have could have guessed that one. Anyway, drains. Uh, what else do we have? Well, it's funny. We can't solve these because they're, these are actually still missing the crucial letters. So let's do it. Now is stat. Do it as soon as possible. So backwards, that'll be tats. And bits of permanent ink are tattoos. So the scam and max. Here we go. P uh, plea for money from a foreign prince, perhaps. Generally a scam. And then max are PC alternatives. There we go. So 48 down will be retros. Postmortem meetings and business speak. Yes. Um, this will be recaps, summarizes. Yes, recaps. This is amazing. <laughs> this really is extraordinary. The next one will be deer, caribou, e.g. Yes, our deer. And then the first one of this line will be lop, hack off, lop off. Yes, as in a limb or something. The down crossing of where I am will be a pupil, like a pupil phase of an insect. A post larval, yes, pupil after the larval phase. The one before where I am will be stops, and that is heeds red light. The one before this will be sled, winter conveyance, a sled. Yes, so let's look at the crosses here. We have EPA organization established by Nixon. Yes, Richard Nixon signed the Environmental Protection Agency into law. And an ethernet alternative is uh, DSL and a way of getting internet to your home. I think DSL is probably not as commonly in use anymore, but I definitely remember it existing. All right, the 65 across will be orama. That would be a suffix, I guess. Yeah, suffix for an extravaganza, orama. Like, um, I don't know what. Well, cinerama is the one that comes to mind for me. It's an incredibly widescreen film format, but uh, that one doesn't use the O, but it's the same idea. Okay, uh, oh, I looked at the clue first on this one. I forgot. Anyway, try to tear is rip at, and that's a reversal of Tapir. So anyway, what's this other one? Uh, scat? Yes, be, uh, yes, be gone is scat. And before this will be era. Noted time period will be an era, and then occupied as a table is sat at that table. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, what is this one going to be? It's going to be no side. End of a rugby match. No side. Okay, I don't know rugby. <laughs> well, unsurprisingly, uh, you won't be shocked to learn. Um, but there we go. That will be the answer. And then crossing this is ergo. The, yes, therefore, ergo. And then the last one is pad. Pad thai, stir-fried noodle dish. There we go. And then University of Maryland athlete is uh, terp. I've heard, I've, I have heard of that. And I don't remember what it's done. Terrapin, maybe, I think. I think it might be short for terrapin. And then Genesis console maker is Sega and 14 time MLB all-star to fans. Oh, a rod, Alex Rodriguez, I want to say, and no, oh no, I got something wrong. Uh Oh, so let's see. I wonder if I made a, a mistake with my, um, my kind of quick filling there, or if I made a mistake during the bit when I was still actually solving the puzzle properly, let's run through and see if I can figure out what's gone wrong. Okay, I cut out the bit when I was just looking around the grid because it was not interesting, but this is not, this isn't, I did this wrong somehow. How did I, oh, and I never checked these. Oh, these are all wrong. Oh, sorry. Where did I get step from? Was pets in the grid? I don't know where I got that. I did something wrong here, but the op the, the sort of opposing palindrome here is not step to it, it's snap to it. How did I get, where did I get step? Uh, there we go. 
Okay, so uh, Roman emperor famed for his debauchery, Nero, uh, bard of Avon is Shakespeare from Stratford-upon-Avon, and then uh, mates are pals. So there we go. All right, so now, now that's all right. I don't know what I did there. Sorry about that. Uh, in any case, it is truly, it is an extraordinary crossword. <laughs> it is, um, that was amazing. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, it was just, initially it was that race car and stats. And of course, because they're in the center of the grid, they're symmetrical only with their themselves. Um, but then everything else was symmetrical in this radial fashion. So, uh, in other words, rotationally symmetrical. I probably should have mentioned that at the time when I started observing this, but they're rotational with the clues 180 degrees rotated rather than vertically or horizontally symmetrical. And that's just the manner in which most, but not all, New York Times crosswords are symmetrical. Sometimes you get horizontal or vertical symmetry, but usually it's this rotational kind. And uh, an amazing puzzle by Daniel Jarrett, an amazing debut, coming right into his um, setting career, his constructing career with a really amazing, <laughs> really amazing feat here. I can't imagine trying to make this work. Good Lord. Uh, well done to him. And so, yeah, that was our theme. It was a great one. It feels like a really ambitious theme for a Tuesday, but uh, very well, very well um uh, sort of tuned for a Tuesday difficulty. And in fact, in some ways, even easier because we could, once we realized what was going on, we could apply it throughout the grid. Um, really incredible. <laughs> glad to have glad to have solved this one, I guess, on the day it came out, as opposed to it being a sort of famous puzzle from history, which I guess it probably will become <laughs> because it deserves it. So that was amazing. Yes. Well done to him. Really enjoyed it. Hope you did as well. And let me know how you um, how, when you noticed what was going on, when you noticed the extraordinary property of this crossword. Do you think, I wonder if I would have realized it without the note. I'd like to think I would have because I would have wanted to find a theme because it is a Tuesday day. And I did see this race car and stats and I didn't Im immediately know that was going to be the extraordinary thing. So I'd like to think I would have. I think I probably would have. I don't know. That's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> Anyway, let me know when, when you caught on. And um, and yes, there was also, there was a note from, um, let's see, there was a note from uh, somebody who said he really misses the bits where I talked about the clues from the previous day. George Steele said, I miss your responses to reader comments. Best part of the show for me. Um, fair enough. I'll try to get back into that. I just um, didn't have time for a full week. And then I just kind of never got back into it and had some days where I was a bit running a bit late. Uh, but we'll do it today. We'll do it right now. So how about that? Uh, here are some clues from yesterday's crossword. <laughs> uh, not many, actually. Just um, just two. Dragon Traces says uh, Gonzaga, is, as, in the, as in the school, is pronounced Gonzaga like zigzag, not zog, like Gonzaga, which I think is what I said. So Gonzaga, thank you for that, Dragon Traces. And then Adrian Chavez, regarding fajitas, says, I worked at Chili's as an expo for a year. Uh, this, I'm not sure what expo is. Is that, oh, someone who expedites the, the orders, I guess. There we go. That must be what it is. Expo expedites. Um, the sizzle of fajitas is accomplished by putting a cast iron pan on a hot plate until it's very warm to the touch and putting a sizzle sauce on the two hottest points. The sauce is vaguely flavored and its only purpose is to sizzle and smoke out on its way to the table. The pan of fajita fillings itself could have been sitting for um, a few minutes before the expo puts it on the hot plate, and this is done right before table service, so the sizzle is no indication of the actual heat level of the food. However, a good kitchen and expo team should minimize the time it sits before the sizzle sauce is put on. So there we go. It was the whole thing was, it was, I knew it was invented as basically a bit of, um, smoke and mirrors to be a bit punny there. Um, smoke anyway. Uh, but I didn't realize the extent to which that was true. <laughs> so that's very interesting to hear, get a peek from behind the curtain there. And those are the, that's all I have from yesterday's puzzle. Um, feel free to leave any comments about today's. And I will be back tomorrow for the Wednesday crossword. I hope you join me then. Take care. Oh, and do, oh, of course, do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Mm -hmm.